to be here today. And, and thanks to all of you for making this a priority to be participating in this. I, I had this speech all written out and I shared it with Elizabeth that I didn't know how, how I'm not really great at speaking on the cuff and I had this speech written out and I may refer back to it but uh, she said just trust your um, have faith in, in God to, to help, help me speak to you all tonight and the importance about um, our convictions and what was said earlier how important it is that we follow the convictions in our life. So just to give you a little bit of background information about who I am, I'm Dennis McGeehan, your Lieutenant Governor. I'm from Idaho Falls, Idaho, where I've lived most of my life, 40 plus years. I did serve in the Idaho legislature for 10 years, but I believe that as servant leaders in our country that we all stand forward and um, offer to serve in, in various ways. It can be in your in your school, it can be at home, in your community, in your church, or it can be in public service. So for myself, it was um, my experience in business and recognizing a need for our government to be more responsive and efficient. As the business community, we are forced to do be efficient because we won't survive if we're not. And so that's what led me to uh, want to serve in public office. So I served for 10 years as a state representative from the area, but also recognizing the vote of the people of Idaho who voted for term limits. I served, after serving 10 years, I decided to term limit myself out. And I think that we all have something to give as, because, because God has given us each different talents. And so we all have something to give and that's what we do. We offer up our service and we, we serve. And then when we've done that, public service is public service, then uh, we go back home and we think about, well, what, is, what does God have for us to do next? And so that's what I, I um, after serving 10 years and I term limited myself and went back home, I've been, my husband Jimmy and I, we've been married for 32 years. We have two grown children, Liza and James, they're both helping us run our companies. We have several businesses in the automotive industry. And so it's not like we, we don't have a shortage of things to do in life, but um, I, I just went home and was open to a new, new direction in my life. We did open up a new restaurant in Idaho Falls as soon as I got back home, and that uh, really poured my uh, efforts and time into getting that business up and going, because especially in the hospitality industry, it's really hard to stay in, in business in that industry because margins are really low, tight, and, and you have to work really hard for your, we, we work really hard for our, our dollars, but I know so many families in Idaho do this. So um, I, was, I was doing that and building up the business, and a lot of what I saw happening in our country had me concerned because this is what America is all about just the ability for each of us to recognize our dreams and, and realize our American dream. That's what America is. And we're so blessed, we're so fortunate to just be born on American soil and the opportunities that we have that are unlike any other opportunities in other countries. And so I was concerned because I started to see around me, I was following the news nationally and across the world, even here in our state of Idaho. And it, um, it, it had me really concerned that what we've been blessed with by our creator, our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is under assault now. And it's, sometimes it's quiet under assault, quietly. Sometimes it's open and brazen. And so, um, and in my experience in business, this really uh, was true to me because I realized it was um, opening a, a first generation business is different than um, operating a second generation business. And that means that um, a second generation business, my husband and I, we bought out his family, his business, which had already been established for 20 or 30 years. 
and uh, had a line of customers, had a, you know, a, a reputation, established business practices. A first generation business is where you go in and you just start from scratch. You, you put whatever resources that you have into this entity and um, you, you just give it all you can and it's, uh, there's no option, it's, failure is not an option. You make it happen. And this experience of starting up this restaurant made me realize with all the experience that my husband and I collectively have together in business, the, um, the our young people, it's really difficult. It's gotten to be really difficult to start up a small business in the environment today, even here in Idaho, with the regulations and the taxation. So I was concerned when I saw this happening and how difficult it is and that we're robbing our you, you the future generations of America, to for you to be able to realize your dreams, no matter what that may be. So that's when I first started thinking about maybe if, maybe I need to get back involved. Um, but it was uh, real deep and personal for me to see how the things that we treasure as patriots and as freedom lovers are our freedom of our very basic rights of uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion are purely under assault today. And, and I, I just could not sit back any longer and, and watch this happen. Um, we, we all need to stand forward and fight against this assault that's happening to us because this is what makes America so unique. And so tonight I wanna to talk to you about this, these, the, the principles, the two principles that are enshrined in our, the First Amendment to our Constitution whereas the First Amendment is, says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government, government for a redress of grievances. So the, our freedom of speech and our freedom of religion are two very basic rights that are endowed by, these rights are not granted to us in our Constitution, even though it's the first bill of, of rights, the first amendment to our Constitution. It's not our Constitution that gives us these rights, it is our Creator who has given us these rights. And um, as written in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What an amazing thing that we've been blessed with from our creator, that as human beings, this is our inalienable right that nobody other than our Creator has given to us, and nobody can take that away from us. And these, these principles are what have set America apart from the rest of the world, and as people were coming over to America to settle the land over here, many of them were coming, as you know, I know, because you're studying the history of America, and uh, don't let anyone rob you of learning about our history. Some people are trying to cover up our history, and that's a mistake. So don't let anyone rob you of studying our history and learning who we are and where we came from, because we can learn so much about our history and um, work to help us understand how fortunate we are, and also what we need to do to protect our liberties. But as people were coming to America in the early days and settling our country, they came over here in large part because they were coming to um, escape religious persecution. And as Governor Winthrop, who sailed over to America on, uh, to establish the, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, he, he called on the people that were coming over on the ship with him that they were going to establish a city upon a hill. And there's a reference to that 
in, in the Bible about how we need to stand and shine as a city on a hill that other people will look to as a model. And, and so these were the early, early settlers going back to the 1600s that recognized the importance of that. For many years, the United States has remained on course, not without hiccups and deviations, certainly, but we've had common goals and held to certain fundamental principles. But today, perhaps more than ever in our history, that foundation appears to be crumbling. We're dealing with far more than just a few cracks as a majority of millennials and double-digit percentages of Americans at large are openly embracing democratic socialism and calling for the wholesale rejection of the capitalist, our capitalist economy. So as you're, as you're in school and you're learning the history and you're listening to people talk and um, they like to um, complain about America, don't listen to the naysayers. It's important to listen to each other, but, but don't believe everything that you hear. I think it's important for you to understand what is truly being said in, in your classroom. Um, along with this growing economic ignorance, support for freedom of speech and freedom of religion is being replaced by calls for some new kind of social justice that requires silencing, often by force, those who hold opinions which the progressives consider objectionable or outdated. Across the border in Canada, a Christian activist was recently ordered to pay $55,000 in fines simply for referring to a transgender politician as a bi biological male. And as we see happening across the country in states like New York, Washington, and Maine, these states are um, right now repealing their religious exemptions for those who wish to decline vaccinations. And this was a debate that we had here in Idaho just this last legislative session. So these are all things that are under assault. Under assault. If, you, if you are active on Facebook, you can understand some of the things that are happening in, on social media, that if people post things that they disagree with, that they can be shut down, um, censorship, deplatforming. When I was running for lieutenant governor in the fall, I had a young man from Boise State University that signed on to volunteer for my campaign. And he was telling us about what um, his, uh, his professor in the classroom explained was the ouch rule. It, and it, this professor said, any student who felt uncomfortable during classroom discussion was able to, all, all anybody had to say was, was to say ouch, and the conversation had to stop. So what are, is that the way that we're supposed to be teaching our young people, especially in the universities? We need to be teaching our young people to think openly and freely. That is how we will, we have survived and we will continue to survive here in America. One person's discomfort is now considered grounds to silence a discussion. This isn't happening in New York City or California, it's happening right here in Idaho. And so if we're to deal with the challenges of an ever-changing world, we must remain open to, to ideas and thoughts that are different, even if we do not agree with them. We cannot be open-minded if, if we close our minds. We cannot be tolerant by being intolerant. We cannot be fair by being unfair. We cannot embrace freedom of speech while shunning speech. We cannot stand for equal rights by denying equal rights to some. Our inalienable rights, enumerated by our founders in our Constitution, are a blessing to be cherished and protected. But each of these rights also comes with a responsibility. The, the freedom of the press comes with the responsibility to tell the truth. I'm gonna share with you some personal experience that I had when I became elected as your lieutenant governor. And I came to Boise and I'm learning my role as pre presiding over the Senate. 
building relationships with people. And during my campaign, I established a, long, a, a great following of people on social media. And everywhere I go, I would love to take pictures with people in their community or what we were doing and interviewing people. And, and people would come to my office and want to say hi. And one day, they were having an a, a activity down at the Capitol where they were um, supporting, it was a, a gun right rally, a, a Second Amendment rally, and um, they were all there to um, stand in support of protecting our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Well, there were two gentlemen that were there, also in the Capitol, who were there to support a man who they believe was wrongfully imprisoned for um, they, the government, our government claims that these people uh, were trying to create an insurrection to the government, but the, the facts and the videos, everything shows it's the opposite. It was the government that was being aggressive towards some peaceful protesters, unarmed citizens. But that didn't matter. The government arrested these people, threw them, in, threw them into prison. Um, two of the the gentlemen from Idaho were uh, went through the trial process, and they they were they, their um, their trial was declared a mistrial because they found out that the government was was hiding evidence on what really happened that day. But one of the gentlemen um, had already received his sentence prior to the judge declaring a mistrial, so he was sentenced to 14 years in prison. And he's from North Idaho, he's from Sandpoint. And um, he, he wasn't uh, creating insurrection that day. He was there. Um, he wasn't threatening police or law enforcement with guns. But he is an Idaho boy who's serving time in, in prison, 14 years, unjustly sentenced. And there are some people who are trying to help this man to defend him and get him out of prison. These two gentlemen were there, and they were wearing an orange prison guard jumpsuit with the name of the gentleman printed on the front of their shirt. And so they came by my capital, I mean by my office at the Capitol, and um, I, I was supporting their efforts, and so we took a picture together outside my office. And I made a hand sign that was the shape of a heart, like I, the name of the gentleman was uh, printed across the t-shirt and I made a hand sign that was directed at this, the name of this gentleman who was serving in prison. The two gentlemen who were with me made a hand sign that um, is affiliated with uh, people who consider themselves patriots. It's a, a three, a, they put, a, put three fingers out and they associate with a group of patriots called the three percenters. And so that was a photograph. It was I, I took it, I posted it on social media. All of a sudden, just this uh, hailstorm of condemnation came down towards me. And um, I didn't even know at the time that some people misconstrued that hand sign to be a symbol of, of racism and white supremacy and white nationalism. And I didn't even know that. I was just. Uh, listening to some people, and we, you know, do what, what I always do is take pictures with my constituents. Anyways, the media and the leftists came down, and they they were calling for me to resign, calling for my resignation. They 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 showed up at my office the first thing in the morning and followed me into the Senate and harassing me. They had the cameras and the microphone in my face and wanted me to make a statement. Don't trust the mainstream media. They're there. They're not there. <laughs> They're not there for our protection and for our, our, our well-being. They're there to try to trap us into saying things and to respond on an emotional, have an emotional response that they can use against us. So anyways, I, you know, I, I made it through that, but that experience to me was, was shocking how people can misconstrue things and as, you know, the, the mainstream media and the liberals, that they just because they didn't like the people who I was standing next to, they were calling for me to resign as the lieutenant governor. And I, I there's no way I'm going to resign. I worked my butt off to be in 
this position. Two years campaigning around the state and talking to a lot of people and fighting for the principles that you're all here for, and that's to protect our freedom, our freedom of speech, our freedom of religion. So I want to encourage you today to, to stand strong, be, become educated, yes, listen to other people, but don't jump to conclusions. Have a heart, have um, respect for others, even if we don't agree with each other. That's one thing in um, America that we do need more of, is respect for each other and listening to each other, even if we disagree. Because that's what this country is all about. That's what makes this country to be truly a, a shining light on the, on the hill. And so if we continue to keep up that fight to protect the rights that are granted to us by our creator and work, fight to up, up, protect and uh, uphold our Second Amendment right, which is the right to keep and bear arms, that Second Amendment right is the one that protects our First Amendment right. And the countries that have sacrificed and given up on these um, ideas with, with an instituted gun control, this is where you see these, um, these inalienable rights that we know we're all able to have and blessed with as human beings, not just Americans, but as human beings. They have lost that, and, but that's why it's so important that we continue to maintain those rights and fight for those rights. So I'm really happy to see that you're all here this week and that these things are important to you, they're important to your parents, they're important to your friends and educators and liberty leaders, um, because it is, it is worth the fight. Um, we, are, we are blessed just to be born on the soil here in America. So don't, don't forget about how fortunate we are. The, don't listen to the naysayers. America is a great place. We still are a shining light, a shining city on the hill. Um, and I think, I think that's uh, most of what I wanted to say to you tonight. Um, we, we have to embrace these rights, and we have to continue to fight and stand together. Uh, so that we don't lose all this. Um, but it, it is up, it's up to you and I, all of us in this room, to do whatever we need to do, whether it's writing an essay in your school, writing a letter to your city council, showing up at a meeting. It's, it's up to each one of us to, to be active and engaged. So I encourage you, however you see an opportunity opening up for you to be engaged, then I encourage you to be brave and speak up. Don't let the voice of some others try to intimidate you. It's um, really important that you remember that and have confidence and faith in yourself and in what God has blessed us all with. So um, with that, I just wanna uh, thank you again for your time and attention. This is how we will keep America.